And in times like today, it is better that we understand how our, our how our immune system works. And also in the future, all of you are in the medical field, so you should have a basic knowledge about the immune system. Okay. So there are two main functions of our immune system. First is the pathogen recognition and destruction of invader that triggers pathways. Okay. So what is the main function of our immune system? So our immune system um, functions, um, they prevent or limit infection by microorganisms such as bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites, okay? There are two basic types of leukocytes. So if you can still remember from the protein discussion, you have encountered the term leukocytes. So there are two basic types. We have the phagocytes. These are the cells that chew up invading organisms. And we have the lymphocytes. These are the cells that allow the body to remember and recognize previous invaders and help the body to destroy them. So these are the two types of leukocytes. Um, we will be focusing on the second type, which is the lymphocytes. So lymphocytes are the key cells responsible for immunity in vertebrates, so like as you might. So they arise from the stem cells in the bone marrow. Now there are two kinds of lymphocytes. We have the B cells or the B lymphocytes and the T lymphocytes or the T cells. Okay, what are the B cells? These are produced and mature in the bone marrow. So they are our body's military intelligence system. Why? Because they seek out targets and sense defenses to lock onto them. So the B, um, the B cells or the B lymphocytes, um, they wander around the body. And then when they encounter a pathogen, okay, they will tag them as an invader. So that later when the T cells, okay, recognize them because of the tag that the B lymphocytes do, they are the ones that will be attacking the pathogens. So the T lymphocytes or T cells, they leave the bone marrow and mature in the thymus gland. They are the soldiers since they destroy the invaders that the intelligence system has identified. Now there are two main parts of the immune system to provide protection for our body. First, we have the humoral, uh, humoral immune response, and the second one is the cellular immune response. When we say humoral immune response, this is antibody-mediated, okay? They rely on the production of antibodies by the B cells. Now, the cellular immune response is cell-mediated, so this involves the T cells. We have two types of T cells. We have the CTL or the cytotoxic T cells and the helper T cells. Now the CTL or the cytotoxic T cells, they are the ones that kills or eats up um, the pathogens. While the helper T cells, as the name suggests, they help or they aid okay, the B cells to produce antibodies. So in both cellular and humoral, humoral immunity, recognition of the foreign invader depends upon the recognition of foreign macromolecules. These foreign components are what we call uh, antigens. So these antigens are what our lymphocytes recognize. So for example, um, when the pathogen or when an a foreign substance enters our body and they have an antigen, then our lymphocytes will recognize them as harmful for our body. Immunogens are molecules that induces an immune response. Haptens are molecules that are not immunogenic but can reach with specific antibody. They are usually small mo molecules but are not protein in nature. Now we have two types of immunity. We have what we call the active and the passive immunity. Active immunity is the resistance induced after contact with foreign antigens. So this immunity is not immediate, but it lasts for a sufficiently long period of time or maybe 
life law. Passive immunity, this is a resistance that is based on an antibodies performed in another host. They are produced due to antibodies obtained from outside. And this immunity develops immediately but lasts only for a few days. Now we have what we call the macrophage or the macrophages or the big eaters. So this one's here. This is the foreign mi microbe with antigens. So when this macrophage or macrophages recognize the antigens, they will engulf or they will eat up these foreign invaders. Macrophages are large specialized cells that recognize, engulf, and destroy target cells. They are derived from the bone marrow and exist as both free and fixed. So the free macrophages are wandering macrophages, monocytes. They are precursor of the fixed macrophages. Now the fixed macrophages, you can only find them in specific parts of the body and they stay in that um, specific part of the body. So when you see or when we see fixed macrophages that are in the liver, we call them cuffer cells. Those in the skin are the Langerhans cells. Those that are in the brain are the neurological cells. And those that are in the lungs are what we call the dust cell. Immunoglobulins. Globulins are also called antibodies. So what is their function? They bind to the ligands, which we call antigens, of the invading organisms. Okay, once they bind to these antigens, they initiate the process by which these organisms are either inactivated or destroyed by the killer T cells. So they are usually Y-shaped and they consist of four polypeptide chains, two heavy chains, and two light chains. So the name of the immunoglobulin is dependent on the type of their heavy chains. They are linked by disulfide bonds. So this is the basic antibody structure. So the name will be known depending on the type of um, heavy chains they have. So we have five main classes. We have the IgA, IgB. IgE, IgG, and IgM. The Ig stands for immunoglobulin. And then the letters that follow, A, D, E, G, and M, okay, is dependent on the type of heavy chain. So for immunoglobulin A, the main class of antibody in secretions such as tears, saliva, and in secretions of the lungs and the intestines. So for example, when we cry, okay, our tears, um, there are... IgA or immunoglobulin A that can be found in there. So it is called immunoglobulin A because it has two identical alpha heavy chains. Immunoglobulin B, this is found on the surface of mature B cells and in traces in various body fluids. But its exact or its main function still remains unclear. So it is still being researched. It has two identical delta heavy chains. Immunoglobulin E, this occurs in tissues where it stimulates mast cells to release a range of factors. Some activate white blood cells or the eosinophils to kill various types of parasites. The mast cells can only release biologically active amines, which cause dilation and increase permeability of blood vessels and lead to the symptoms seen in allergic reactions such as hay fever and asthma. So this has two identical epsilon heavy chains. So for example, if you have allergies, so the immune response of our body would usually okay, involve the production of these antibodies or the immunoglobulin A. Okay, so this is an example of the symptoms of hay fever. This is also an allergic reaction. And uh, the response of our body is an increase in the production of the immunoglobulin A. Okay, immunoglobulin G or IgG, this is the main immunoglobulin in the bloodstream. This is the only antibody that can pass through the placenta and provide immunological protection for the fetus. This is secreted also in mother's milk and is taken up from the gut of the newborn baby in the bloodstream, thus providing continued protection after birth. Um, it's called immunoglobulin G because they have two identical gamma heavy chains. Immunoglobulin M, it exists as a pentamer. Okay, so it is composed of five monomer units 
in combination with another polypeptide, which we call the J chain, if we will be looking at the structure of uh, IgM. It activates macrophages to phagocytose or to engulf or to eat pathogens. This is the first antibody produced when the body responds to a new antigen. 